Hi, I'm Tracy Pierce. Today I want to answer the question, what would a session with you and someone's pet be like? Now, first of all, I do record the session, so you don't have to furiously take notes unless you really like to do that. Then for the first five minutes or so when I connect with a new animal, what I do is I put the human on mute. This helps me make sure I have a really good connection to the animal and that I'm not accidentally reading the human's energy instead. Now, essentially I connect with your animal friend telepathically and we don't need to be in the same place physically in order to do that. Usually I use a photo of your pet to connect with them. And it's really helpful if you can send me a photo that's just of your, your animal friend and doesn't have any humans in the picture as well. Now, a photo isn't 100% necessary, but it does help me connect more quickly with your animal friend. So then I use the photo to connect with the animal and relay what they share with me. This might be through images, feelings, words, smells, and, and even more than that. The way I think of myself is as your animal translator and I do my best to share everything that your animal friend conveys to me. I can also help mediate issues between animals or between animals and the humans or any, you know, the animals that aren't getting along in the household. I can help mediate those issues. Now, when we first connect, I might ask you some questions about your animal friend, just for clarification, like their age, their sex, their breed, how long they may have lived with you, some basic things like that. Now, I certainly can connect with your animal friend without that information, but I find that people get the most from the session when I know what's happening from your side as well as from the animal side. Now, I may not need to know all those details right up front, but I will probably at some point ask you how you're feeling about the situation or what your perspective on the situation is as well. We need everybody's viewpoints to, to find harmony and resolution. I'm also not a, a psychic in the sense of being a fortune teller or being able to predict the future. <laughs> I really think of myself more of like a translator or a mediator. And my goal is to share everything that your animal friend conveys to me. So I do have questions that I move through as they seem appropriate, but I really, really encourage the human to bring their questions as well. In fact, I really, really encourage you to bring your questions. This can be an amazing experience when it's interactive. And usually the animals are so much more interested to engage when they're human has questions and wants to engage them in this way. So I really highly recommend that you write these questions down. I've seen it happen that sometimes animal communication can be an emotional experience for people. And once we get into the session, they forget what the questions were they thought they were gonna ask, they thought they were gonna remember them. But when we get in the session, they forget. So I highly encourage you to write any questions you have down but also to really bring your sense of curiosity and wonder about your animal friend. There's a lot more to them than perhaps you realize. So when we have problems or behavior, behavioral challenges with our animal friends, bringing their point of view into the situation is really important because often their point of view is really, really different from what the human perspective thinks is going on. And this particularly applies to behavioral issues and health challenges. So sometimes what the human thinks is a problem is really not a problem at all from the animal standpoint, which is why we need everybody's perspective so we can find a way to resolve issues and create more harmony, peace and understanding in the home. Now, one of the beauties about animal communication is that it takes everyone's perspective into consideration and looks for mutually beneficial resolutions for everyone, all beings involved. So this isn't about making your animal do something. It's about hearing what they have to say about the situation and taking that into account as well as the human standpoint, the human viewpoint. So if there are struggles between animals or between animals and their humans, I will always maintain a neutral attitude between any matter of conflict. 
so that we can find best solutions. If I'm neutral, then it helps us find the best solution for everyone involved. Now, sometimes during a session, animals want to receive energetic healing work and they'll ask for it. So similar to humans, when animals have negative or traumatic experiences, sometimes that energy can get stuck in their field. And the healing technique I employ can help release some of these emotional scars that might get stuck in your animal's energy. Now I do the energy healing both with the animals and the animal owner's consent. There's another video that I made about this healing technique. The technique is called BEST. So if you're interested to learn more about BEST in particular, you should check out that other video. I'll put the information on how to get there below. So your animal friends really, really love it when they get engaged in this way by you. So definitely bring your curiosity, bring your wonder, and bring your desire to connect with your animal friend more deeply to the session. All right, so if this resonates with you and you're ready to learn more, head on over to my website at tracy-pierce.com. You can learn more about animal communication there and book a session if that resonates and feels like it's the right time for you. I hope to connect with you sometime soon. And until then, take care and be well.